again, uh, I would like to share my story because uh, that is how I learned life and that is how I lived life. And I believe that somehow or the other, uh, some of you might be able to relate to it. Uh, there was a time when I was uh, perfectly fine uh, walking, running around, and uh, great uh, you know, ambitions in life, the whole track laid out of me, cocky young fellow at the age of 15, six feet three inches tall, wanted to be the world heavyweight champion of the world, the first one from Pakistan. Uh, it all uh, was planned in my head. I wanted to join the army using their supporting, uh, sporting facilities or Uniko use Kirteve, I wanted to go professional and I wanted to buy a Harley Davidson, a Ferrari and whatnot. So, um, and the belief that nothing is impossible was something that stuck with me throughout my life. And uh, one thing that I didn't realize in the younger age is that nothing is actually impossible. I dived into shallow water. Uh, it is, I think, in 91, 20 years from now. I dived into shallow water, broke my neck from three places, was evacuated to a hospital where they drilled two holes in my skull, and that is how I had lost most of my brain, which was, uh, I think, the marker jo kuch reh gaya tha, wo bhi nikal gaya. But anyway, I uh, initial reaction of my accident was that okay, it has happened. My exam results are about to come out. My parents won't say anything because I'm injured. I'm in the hospital. I will soon recover. I'll be back on my feet again and do whatever I wanted to do with my life. Uh, one month passed, two months passed. My situation was that I could not move an inch below my neck. I could not scratch myself. They required three people to turn my uh, position from uh, within the bed, etc. So I won't bore you with the details, but the point was that I was totally gone. Uh, my ambitions were surrounded by not my intellect, but primarily my physical abilities. And those abilities had been taken away from me in an instant. And I realized that nothing is impossible. Because I always dreamt that I would get good things in life because everything was possible for me. I never thought that anything bad can happen to me. So one must keep in mind that nothing is impossible both ways. You know, you don't only get the good stuff, you get the bad stuff also. So, when I had my accident, like I said, my whole life was surrounded by my physical ambitions, etc. I just thought that, you know, that I've hit the rock bottom, there's nothing going, nothing doing. I will never be able to recover from this and I'm going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of my life, even if I regain some strength, the maximum that I can do is sit on a wheelchair. And that's not going to help me achieve anything in life. Until I realized that whether I decide to do anything or not, there is no possibility that I can just sit there and do nothing. Humans cannot be sitting around and doing nothing. It cannot happen. There are two ways, either we do things instinctively or we do things with our own choice. And I think it is always better to do things with your own choice because otherwise there's no difference between my dog and myself. I am, animals react to instincts and human think before they react. So I started to plan out that, okay, uh, my brain is still here, my emotions are still there. Uh, my body has given up on me in most of the ways. So what can I do sitting on a wheelchair? I realized that I will be physically dependent, so I went for financial independence. How could I achieve it? Basically to go out and educate myself because I was a metric pass at that time. And uh, 
while doing so i was able to uh you know go to one school uh, to another to another eventually graduated then i did my mba primarily because everybody was doing it that time um, i did not wanted to get into the development sector and help uh, i should not say this but i never wanted to help you know directly intentionally help people in my condition i wanted to be in mainstream i wanted to be where other people were i wanted to have the most fun that uh, the rest of the world was having and while doing that i made some you know a uh, criteria for myself which was that i will not avail any disability quota i will not any you know exploit any rebates given to physically challenged sector so i got into the mainstream it gave me um, after my mba i got a pity job of paid me around 1200 rupees i soon realized that i will not be able to you know fulfill my financial goal with that so i moved on i wrote to one of my teachers saying that you know you are the one who has taught me you can see beyond my disability and i would like to do something for your organization and uh, he bluffed me he said that right now we have a position which requires you to travel a lot and uh, in your condition it would be very difficult to do that and i wrote him saying that you know how i manage it it is totally up to me as long as you give me a shot don't pay me for a few months and if you still feel that i can do it then keep me otherwise let me go so that is how i got my first break i joined an oil company in human resource department got the financial independence met a met a wonderful lady got married settled down in my apartment and then i realized that life is so boring you wake up <laughs> you know you wake up you go to one organization you do whatever you do you come back you do meet your friends some of them you like some of them you hate but you know society you have to live with them whether you like it or not so getting tired of it made me uh, made me one day just get up and leave my job and i left my job and myself and my wife we went to blow away money to some other country and we came back and i had no clue what i was going to do next and uh, eventually i came up with the concept that you know one that i love uh, sports and uh, that is something that i always wanted to do before my accident how can i pursue it in this condition so i was good at driving i did bang a few cars i you know did bumped into a few motorcycle थोड़े बहुत लोगों ने मुंह पे चपेड़े भी मारी कि माजूर हो तो गाड़ी क्यों चलाते हो इट्स एक्टर इट्स एक्टर बट यू नो दैट्स पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ आई डोंट माइंड दैट तो व्हाट आई डिड वाज नोइंग दैट इफ यू कीप योर जॉइंट्स लॉक्ड इन अ पोजीशन फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दे गेट फिक्स्ड एंड दैट इज व्हाट आई डिड आई यूज्ड टू कीप बैंड विद माय हैंड्स एट नाइट फॉर 3 मंथ्स एंड आई मेड अ हुक आउट ऑफ देम एंड दैट हुक अलाउड मी टू होल्ड अ बॉटल अ होल्ड अ फोन and eventually when computers came along i'm not i, I actually am that old uh, when cu- computers came along i started to learn how to type with my knuckles and that is what gave my way in terms of my professional career etc and i was able to drive also um when i finished khaibur to karachi we were sitting gathering friends and you know everybody said that you know you have educated yourself you have uh, done most of things that normal people cannot achieve socially you have achieved the status so you know you're done there's nothing you can do more than that to top this and i realized yaar ke main gaadi mein baitha hua tha i was driving and there was not much fun in it uh, there was a lot of fun in it so you know there was not much exertion in it i wanted to be a heavyweight world champion and in boxing if any of you has ever experienced i have a slight tilty nose uh once you get into the ring either you're mohammed ali clay or pakyo uh you will get at least one good hit on your face 
whether you like it or not. You cannot be in the ring and not be hurt. So it wasn't hurting at all. Khaibu to Karachi was not painful at all. So I, I'm not sadist, honestly. I'm not a sadist at all. I came back home, I googled the toughest support for a quadriplegic in a wheelchair. And they can, you know, the results were primarily wheelchair marathons. And a marathon is for 42 kilometers, 26 miles. You have to self-propel your wheelchair. And you sit in a position, if you see in this picture, which is basically like this. And that is that, you know, um, I don't have any movements below my shoulders. So if I, uh, I control my body through my neck. So if I tilt forward, I'll fall forward. If I tilt rightwards, I will ride forward. I won't do any more experiments. But the point is that I basically hold my body with my neck. And um, in this position, it was very difficult for me to get up and have a diaphragm full of breath. But I started, I was the only one in the start-finish line of Lahore Marathon. And I started off knowing that I will not be able to finish for the qualifying criteria of London, Boston, New York. But I wanted to do it just to know whether I can pull it off or not. And in seven and a half hours, uh, I've been coughing out blood. Uh, uh, a lot of other things happened. I won't bore you with the details. But I finished the race in seven and a half hours. They would Thank you. When I reached the finish line, there were no uh, sponsors, there were no organizers, there was no media, it was only my friends and family and a lot of people who followed me throughout the route. And uh, I remember once I got out of my contraption that you see now, uh, the first thing that I did was call up the organizers and tell them that I finished the race, please note my time. <laughs> At least, you know, it become official, otherwise it would be my word against anybody else's. So uh, they, kind, they were kind enough to do that. And uh, I hurt myself really bad during the race. Uh, every doctor, every family member said that, Samad, you are not going to do anything stupid again. So this is it. This is actually it. And I said, okay, seven and a half hours, nobody is going to give me entry to any big race. So yeah, I'm a retired athlete now. So, <laughs> but I came back home and I rode to Boston, New York and London saying that, you know, even though I have not come up to your criteria, but do consider, London said, no, you cannot come. Boston said, we are a bit strict too. However, New York City Marathon came back to me saying that we have never had entry from this region of the world and we would like you to come and participate in our race. And and this, uh, for for a child, and I still consider myself mentally child, because I never matured, and even my wife is paying, when will I? But I'm not. Uh, but the point was that for me, being able to go to New York City, represent my country in an athletic forum was a huge deal. So now it was a challenge to convince my family that whether I can go or not, and then get enough sponsors to fund my whole travel. And um, somehow or the other, I'm good with my words. And um, um, that's what I do for a living, basically. Sometimes I forget. But uh, I was able to convince people to allow me to go and then fund me to go. I went to New York, and six days before the race, I had a fall in the bathroom. I had a ruptured hip, muscles bursting out of my uh, you know, left hip. Uh, I did not go to any official doctors. I know it's not a good advice because they would obviously would ban me from the race. I called up my wife and asked her, Zara, what should I do? And she said that just go and start the race and come back. You know, you would be at least saying that, you know, you participated in New York City Marathon if not finished. I went to Staten Island Bridge and um, if you're familiar with New York City, it's either uphill or downhill. And once you're sitting on wheels, both of them are a pain in the butt because, you know, when you're going downhill, even though you're rolling on momentum, you, the speed actually scares you. 
And once you're going uphill, it's like one push forward and two push backwards. And that is what happened to me in New York also. But I, I did Staten Island Bridge. I passed one mark, then the other, then the other. And I thought that it's not that bad. Maybe I can finish the whole thing. I reached the 18th mile and I was totally exhausted. And I said, now this is it, you know, because uh, I don't know if any of you ever run a marathon or have run a marathon. 18th mile is the mile where you've come a long way and there's still a lot to go. And uh, somehow the audience, the spectators in New York were aware of the criticality of that mile. And not for me, for everybody, they were cheering, pain is temporary, pride is forever. And that is something that took me forward. And uh, I did again uh, finish the race in seven and a half hours. I was the sixth last from... Thank you. I was the sixth last, you know, in the race. But I can proudly say that I came back with a finishers medal and was the first ever Pakistani, at least wheelchair bound, to ever go and represent Pakistan on such a platform. And uh, after that, did I learn anything in terms of not torturing myself physically? I doubt it. But, you know, uh, right now I did hand cycling and some other stuff. So the point is that, you know, enough of bragging, and I can go on bragging about myself as, you know, it's, it's a most fun thing to do in the world and making a living out of it is amazing but um, <laughs> but the point is that you know uh, since a child I've been hearing the word nothing is impossible I grew up there were a few ad campaigns which you know jumbled the world, uh, words up and down, impossible is nothing, etc, etc. And we still have making the impossible possible. And I think since 90s till now, we have made so many impossible possible, not me, many other people in this world, that I think this is obsolete now. This should not exist anymore. This is just a reminder that people, humans, used to think that way. This is no more. This is no more valid. We have proven it time and time again, and we need to get rid of the term as well. Because words do make what we think. And um, coming back to myself again, people ask me, how do I do? How do I do what may basically live my life? How, why do I get up in the morning why do I get out of bed because it takes me around three hours to get out of the bed and be in this position it requires two individuals to lift me off this wheelchair and put me in a car etc etc I never had the money for full rehab and I will never have the money to for full rehab because my spending would rather go to a Ferrari or a Harley Davidson <laughs> so <laughs> So I'm not one of those who is waiting for, for a cure to come and make me walk again because I think the kind of attention I get sitting on a wheelchair is priceless. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, how do I do it? There's no rocket science to it. But one thing that I, a few things that I would like to uh, leave you with is your past, uh, I don't have any regrets. I dived into shallow water guided by an individual who said that Pani waha pe gehra when I asked him because where I was standing it was six inches and where he pointed it was two feet and a half. So relatively he was correct, I cannot blame him. I, I had a bad medical treatment maybe, I cannot blame the doctors for that because that I got the best treatment available in this country. I could blame the society for not accepting me in my condition, but I cannot because they gave me a lot in return also. Um, I can blame the government for not providing me enough facilities 
or this building for not making ramps. But you know, eventually I'm on the stage. So I cannot blame them either. Um, and that is, that is the trick primarily. Do not have any regrets, which is your past. Be comfortable and do not complain, which is your present. And do not be afraid, because that is your future. We are always afraid of what we don't know. We are never afraid of our past. I am never afraid of an operation that I have already had. You know what I mean? And as long as we live, any person who is not doing anything in his life does not get the sense of constant improvement in him or herself. And that is something very critical. If we don't have that, there's no difference between us and animals. And animals are beautiful, but yet we can do much better than that. And uh, that is basically, <laughs> that is basically what I wanted to convey through my life. Uh, it does go on. I do uh, have a lot of challenges in my daily routine and hopefully I will have more. Uh, because they stimulate me to go on and on and on and connect with people like you. And uh, thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. I really enjoy this, you know, height of narcissism, I would say. But, but remember that this standing ovation that you gave me is, uh, even though I really uh, deeply appreciate it and I love it, I really enjoy when people do that. But this standing ovation is not for me. It is um, two things that I cannot do and all of you and if not most of you can. That is stand up and clap. So one thing that I want to leave you with is that whenever you feel down, just stand up and wait for all the blessings that you have and so many of us do not have. Thank you so much. <laughs>